at 6.30, grab the tissue box. We have the touching moment of a refugee family reunited after two years. Plus, a vital route for many drivers, an update on the Scottsburg Bridge conditions. And a live look over downtown Eugene, your seven-day forecast, and more coming up. Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 6.30. A family of Syrian refugees is finally reunited after two years. We were there for the big moment. Now today is their first full day together in Eugene. Good evening and thanks for joining us for NBC 16 News at 6.30. I'm Megan Shin. Eugene resident Hussein Rashu welcomed his wife and two little boys to town last night after a long journey from Dubai. NBC 16's Ashley Force takes us to the tearful reunion. With rising tuition for more than 24,000 Oregon College students, a higher education may now be out of reach. Most recently, Portland State University approached the 9% tuition hike. Joe English has details on the rising costs. And we often talk about decisions and resolutions coming out of the United Nations Security Council, but have you ever thought about what the Security Council is or what it does? Their rough and tumble sport is taking over Lane County this weekend and fans have taken notice. Thousands of skaters, fans and volunteers attended the 6th annual Big O International Roller Derby Tournament at the Lane Event Center in Eugene. More than 30 roller derby teams have traveled from all over the world, squaring off for a spot in the playoffs. They traveled from as far away as Argentina, Sweden and Finland. A Eugene family is mourning the death of their teenage daughter after a tragic accident on the Coos County coast. Good evening and thanks for joining us for NBC 16 at 11 and Megan Shin. Oregon State Police say the accident happened yesterday afternoon at the South Jetty Park Beach in Bandon. According to the investigation, the 14 year old Eugene girl was playing on a log in a heavy receding tide when the log rolled on top of her. Officials say after several attempts, bystanders were able to remove her from the log and call for help. She was taken to a nearby hospital where she died from her injuries. Police will release more information as it becomes available. Stay with NBC 16 News for more on this developing story. Emmy Award winner for Best Evening Newscast. Welcome back. A showdown with North Korea as the nation is reportedly poised to launch a nuclear test. And it's a tough task to ask Oregon to take down the fifth ranked Washington at Autzen Stadium tonight, but it marks the first time the Ducks lost to the Huskies since 2003. Dexter's Rural Fire Department is asking for your vote. NBC 16's Ashley Force was at the police training session today where they actually study people who were under the influence. The windy weather resulted in more than just widespread power outages. Fire officials have been called to more than 50 electrical fires in Lane County since the windstorm hit. Eugene Springfield fire officials urge you to call the fire department if you see a downed power line. Officials say downed power lines are dangerous and handling an electrical fire can be more difficult than a normal fire. You don't know if the lines are, are live or not, or if they're, we get calls for everybody. So it could be a cable line, it could be a, a high voltage power line. We don't know until we get there. As advised, fire officials say if you see a downed power line, do not touch it or go near it. Instead, call the fire department or your electrical company immediately. Big shot here. Oh. Morgan left everything it had on the floor, but in the end, the Ducks were dealt a heartbreaking one point loss at the hand of North Carolina in the final four. Good evening, and thanks for joining us on NBC 16 at 11. I'm Megan Shin. I watched this on my desk, Megan, about a hundred times today. Uh, I think that's the best video you'll see all that's day. That's hilarious. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we can try to match that with um, some pachyderms. Oh, okay. So we'll take a look at those animals. Megan, are you? I'll have s'mores all day, any day. But that, is, that is so different. <laughs> yeah. Coming up next on NBC 16 at 6:30, 13 Republican senators are now tasked with revamping the House bill that could change health care for millions of Americans. That's next. They took part in the sixth annual Spring Clean event today. That's a cute play on words. While the kids climbed boulder walls, parents stayed on the ground and learned all about upcoming summer camps. Keeping an eye on the economy tonight, a $63 million upgrade for the Seneca Sawmill in Northwest Eugene is nearing completion. CEO Todd Payne says demands have shifted from green lumber to dry lumber over the past 10 to 12 years. So the company is upgrading its kilns. That will allow the mill to dry its own lumber using steam heat. And Seneca has also added new technology to scan each individual log. 
How cool. Then it instantly cuts the logs into the most efficient and profitable board possible. Payne says technology is vital to today's saw mills. That's going to allow us to add to our automation and technology in one of our three sawmills, as well as expand our drying capabilities so that we can now dry the bulk of our lumber uh, and uh, it's going to allow us to gain market share. Payne says this will help Seneca expand its markets into the Midwest and East Coast. It brings Seneca's total investment at its mills to nearly $130 million in the last six years. On to our first look at weather, NBC 16's chief meteorologist Chris Nation live in the Weather Center for us tonight. Chris, how is Easter Sunday looking? He was stabbed around 8 a.m. this morning in a home right across from Willamette High School. NBC 16's David Caltabiano joins us in the newsroom now. He has been following the story for us. David, you spoke with police today. What do we know so far about this investigation? Tax day is fast approaching, and as Americans finish up those last-minute calculations, thousands took to the streets across the country today, demanding to see the tax returns of one prominent taxpayer, President Donald Trump. Good evening and thanks for joining us for NBC 16 News at 11. I'm Megan Shin. We know the identity of the man who was arrested during yesterday's Trump related demonstrations in Salem. Police say Matthew Hagee allegedly pepper sprayed a police trooper in the face and was also involved in a fight between two opposing groups. Police say the 31 year old was carrying a concealed firearm as well. And they say he is a convicted felon. Hagee was lodged in the Marion County Jail and faces multiple charges now. From tonight's crime tracker, a man was arrested on suspicion of drunk driving in Albany after he crashed into a home. According to the Lane County Sheriff's Office, Justin Perrine told deputies he was showing his friends his new car early this morning when he missed a curve and crashed into a home on Southeast Spicer Road. One of the passengers was hospitalized, but she is expected to survive. Perrine now faces multiple charges. In a story that book lovers will appreciate, the Eugene Public Library is now more than $80,000 richer. Well, your parents, your grandparents, and even your great-grandparents might know this name, the Ringling Brothers Circus. Now the greatest show on earth is saying goodbye for one last time. 